But I guess <laughs> Should we take some questions? Or? Yeah, well, we could. Let me let me ask you one more. Sure. Um, you know, I know there's been, you know, you on CNBC even had you on talking about the fact that, that obviously some of the big corporations are interested in big machines. That's pretty boring, boring isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just thought I'd give you a chance to say, you know, uh, is is there a chance that you would join the corporations? Uh, you know, I, predominantly I'm unhirable. So the fact <laughs> that I would have another boss doesn't really appeal to me. You know, I, we're very fortunate, you know, as I said on CNBC, I have a house, I have a car, I have a great wife, you know, I don't know that you can really just throw a bunch of money in front of us and us give up what we've got. So, you know, you, you never say never, but right now, you know, I haven't seen anything that excites me more than what we do. So, you know, we've, we're always, we're always looking at opportunities. And uh, there's a lot of great things happening, and we're not done by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, it would have to be pretty extraordinary for us to change our mind. Okay. Right. Um, like I said, you know, I don't know if we have any microphones out there, but if people have questions, uh, you know, raise your hand. There's one here in the corner. Mr. Borchetta, it's very nice to have you here. Well, thank you. Uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a two parter. And first of all, it's going to be a little bit of praise, I think. Uh, the Billboard Woman of the Year issue. It seems to me that it was, uh, it was very classy of you to have an over-the-cover ad uh, for, the, for the issue. If you have your thank you to Taylor on the inside of the, uh, the issue. And I would say that it, it seemed to me some sort of manifestation of power in the industry as well. Classy first, little gesture about power in the industry. Am I getting it wrong? And is it other things too? Well, you know, it's it was from the heart. It was written from the heart. And if there's any other message, it's just that we have a great family, you know, and she's part of it. And I think if, if you want to dig deeper into that, we have that kind of relationship with with all of our artists. So our, you know, our mission is to have a place where you want to be as an artist. And I, and I would ask uh, the, the essential follow-up to this is, and I mean this in a very serious sense. How many people are working in Nashville due in part to Big Machine Label Group success? Uh, how does your success permeate Nashville? You know, I, I don't know that I can really answer that question. What was the first part? How many people are working at Big Machine? How many people are working? In, I mean, you have a Because of Big Machine, not just at Big Machine, oh. because of your success. Okay. Yes. Well, you know, it's a really interesting question because when you think about the artists that we've been able to break and support and all of their groups, you know, you're talking about the teams on the road and the management companies and all that. It really creates hundreds of jobs. You know, it really does. And uh, thank you for, for pointing that out. The other thing I can't answer, that, that's up to you guys to answer. We, we just do what we do and we believe in what we do. Actually, when you sell tens of millions of records, it's, uh, it's going to permeate out through the town a little bit yeah, and, you know, and create some other opportunities. Yeah. Uh, question here in front row. You mentioned working with Jessica, mm -hmm. but there were some things that you learned that you made sure that when you worked with Taylor, yes. that you would improve. Can you go in more detail some of the things you learned and, some, and how it worked with Taylor? Yeah, an understanding of, you know, I don't want to sound negative towards Jessica because she's, she's a great artist, um, but she just didn't have the, the focus. And a lot of artists that young don't have the focus, and that's what's so extraordinary about Taylor. <coughs> You know, when I met her at 14, she had that focus. And so it was really identifying that and making sure that, you know, that there were, there were some issues that we had. And it's not fair for me to talk about them, honestly. But, um, you know, the things that we made sure that we did with Taylor was having Taylor understand what we were getting into and explaining to her and the family the commitment that it was going to take and that it was going to change their life if it worked, and it was probably going to work. And to give them as much information going in as we possibly could. And, you know, I don't know, is there anything specific? Because, again, I don't want to sound negative towards this. No, really, I, was just, yeah. I was just curious some of the things that, that you maybe did. Yeah, you know, and, you know, and I'll say this too, just as something that we would say in a, an artist meeting, especially with the female artist. When you go in to meet, because in the early days, and, and everybody who's a Taylor fan knows that she's a hugger, right? There's probably people who've been hugged by Taylor, right? There you go. <laughs> Me too. And um, 
she, in the early days, she would literally just lunge at you. And you'd see this big ball of blonde hair just go, ah! <laughs> And so one of the things I told her is like, especially when we have a male program director and his wife is standing right here. <laughs> Hug her first. <laughs> so, you know, because you know, Taylor didn't look like she was 14. She could have been 20. So, you know, one of the things you have to do as a female artist is make sure that you're attractive in an artistic way to other females. And so that was something that, that we talked to Taylor a lot about, and, and she got it. So when you can be friends with the wife first, you know, it makes it a lot easier.